so much for all the things that he's doing for our Women's Day 2023. And we just love the Lord for bringing us this far. There's been a lot that's happened in the last few years, but we thank God we're back in the sanctuary, giving God that praise and giving him the glory. welcome you this morning. My name is Minister Muriel Gibbons, and I welcome you all into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Today is a very special day as we are celebrating Women's Weekend. Ephesians 2.10 tells us that the biblical woman is a gospel-centered woman. Mm -hmm. That she is created, redeemed, blessed, and gifted to be a blessing to everyone around her. So today we welcome you to join our women as we praise and worship God. Hallelujah. As we go before the throne of grace, I invite you to stand, if you are able. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne, Lord Jesus with a grateful heart, God, asking you, Lord, to redeem us, God, to revive us again, Lord Jesus. But before anything else, Father, I pray that you, your Holy Spirit, will continue to reside in this place, Lord, that everything in us, God, that is unlike you, Lord Jesus, will be diminished, Father God, that the flesh will decrease, Lord, as your Holy Spirit that resides in us increases, Lord Jesus. Father God, remind us of who we are in you, Lord Jesus, of why we were created, God, to praise and worship you, Lord Jesus, in spirit and in truth, God. We thank you right now, this morning, Lord, for another day in the land of the living God. Give us another opportunity, Lord Jesus, while our breaths are filled, our lungs are filled, God, with your breath, Lord Jesus. We use that breath to praise you, Lord God, yes, to God. worship you, Lord Jesus, yes, and declare that you are the Alpha and the Omega, God, God. the beginning yes. and the end, Lord Jesus. Yes, and without you, God, there would be no us, yes, Lord Jesus. So we welcome you this morning, God. We know you already met us here, Lord God, because we cannot invite you to a place that you already own, Lord, to a place where you already reside, God. So we thank you, God, for meeting us here, Lord Jesus. And I ask that you will go above and beyond our prayers in this service, God. That as Reverend Fran comes before us, Lord Jesus, that you will use her for your glory, God. That it will follow good soil, Lord Jesus. And that, Father God, you will get the praise in you alone, Lord. We thank you, God. We praise you and magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. before the praises and the, the glory of God. God said that he dwells in the praises of his people. So I want you to just take a minute. I know all of us have something we can thank God for. Some of us are glad we were able to walk into the house of God this morning. Some of us are glad we're not in a hospital today. So I want you to lift those hands and tell God, thank you for that thing you are glad about. Give him that worship and praise. Give him that glory that's in his name. For the power of God is present to do whatever it is that is needed in this house. He said he would meet us here. And he's just waiting for us to be in his presence. But we have to offer him that praise. We have to offer him that glory. You may not understand, but lift your hands and surrender to God. And tell the Lord whatever it is you need from me today. I yield it to you now, Lord. I'm open to whatever you want, God. Oh, God, and we worship you. We praise you. We glorify you. As we sing this little song of praise. Make it your dwelling place. 
to cause us to grow, to cause us to become more than what we've known before, to help us develop our gifts and our talents. And we want to take just a moment to share a little bit about her. You can have your seats. Good morning. My poetry reading today uh, was a very favorite uh, poem by Elder Regina Fleming. It was written by uh, the great Langston Hughes. Uh, it uses the metaphor uh, of a staircase to depict the difficulties and dangers one will face in life. It's a mother's warning to her son about the stairs one is forced to climb throughout life. He must watch out for broken boards, splinters, and tacks. The poem is entitled, Mother to Son. Well, son, I tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time, I's been a climbing on, and reaching landings, and turning corners, and sometimes going in the dark, where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on them steps. Cause you finds it kinda hard. Don't you fall now. For I still going, honey. I still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. We're going to do, can you hear me? <laughs> okay, come on now. We're going to do a moment of silence in honor of Elder Rojin Fleming. We light a candle and bring the roots 
of this great woman of God that God blessed us with here at Abiding Faith and in all of our lives. God has always been good to us and sharing those wonderful things that he has done. We're going to ask two of our ladies, our sister Constance Taylor, Miss Connie, so come on up, and our sister Victoria Young. Good morning, Facebook friends, family, and AFCC family especially. My name is Constance Taylor. Um, I definitely have been blessed. Um, and as the song says, better, better one day in his court. Because you got to appreciate the one day that you have because you may not even have the next minute. Um, three years ago, my life and my family's life changed drastically. My husband of 38 years went into fluid overload and was placed on a respirator and then placed on dialysis. Our daily life was an upward journey, but God. Right. He helped us. He kept us. Since then, we've had multiple hospital stairs, but God. His grace and mercy has kept us and keep bringing us through. I've learned to trust him through every season. I've been through not knowing if we were going to make it from one, one month to the next, sometimes one day to the next. Because I could no longer work, funds were still were tight and still are. But I realized, you know, people look at you and on the outside and think everything is fine, but have no idea what's going on inside. So for that, I thank God because he's kept me. Amen. He's kept all of us. Yes. I realize that every season is a trial, that they are always a blessing. Mm -hmm. Wherever, whenever you have a, a, a down go, there's a blessing there. You just have to look at it because it's the little things that count. Yeah. I've all, even every time we were blessed, I've always shared with others so I could also, so that they can also pass it on and move it forward. Um, oh goodness! Uh, there are when things are tight. I just things. I, I I can't believe. Yes, I do. I believe it because I know I've seen it happen. Yeah. How God has sent people in our path. Yeah. Have sent people even just to cut our grass. Yeah. to fix our vehicle, uh -huh. to send money. And I'm like, oh no. Um, so many different things. Yeah. I, I look for the text that people send us, especially that Monday text that we get every Monday. I look for, I mean, I appreciate the calls, the hugs, the just saying, I love you, I was thinking about you. Um, because as a wife and mother, you know you go through a lot more than your husband or your children. So you've got the burden on you. And if you don't have God in your life to keep you through, you won't make it. Um, I just, God has been so good. I have lupus, but it doesn't have me. God never gives us more than we can handle. I know that because I have, if I have a lupus flare up, I wouldn't be able to hold family up in any way but God. My thoughts that I leave with you is whatever season you're going through, find a blessing, no matter how small it may look. 
always look to the hills yeah. from which your blessings come yeah, yeah, yeah. because God is there. Yeah. very much for the opportunity to share um, this testimony um, because I need it just as much as I think that somebody somewhere may need it. So I'm going to start by saying um, it's not the what I went through or am going through that's important. It's really not even the why mm -hmm. um, or how. Mm -hmm. But when I really thought about it and prayed on it, what I kept hearing is it's the where where I was and where I am in my relationship and my walk with God and how that has impacted this situation, how that impacted the what. So I will say this, there is protection in God's presence. And in that protection and in, in what would have been honestly a very deadly situation. It was a health situation, something that I'm still dealing with even now. Um, but there was peace. At the moment that it really came to a head, I was at home by myself, and I know it was no one but God because there was no one but me and God in my house at that moment, and all I heard was, you're healed. You're healed. And that message of your healed kept replaying over and over every step. It's still playing out, even now. Um, so continuing on with just being obedient, there was peace. There was peace in just knowing that this is just something I have to get through. Don't focus on the storm. Focus on what's on the other side of it and the fact that God has already gone before me and prepared the way. And, and again, and one of those things that I don't, you don't even realize it until you realize where you are and why you're not freaking out and why you're not breaking down and why people are trying to figure out how you're still standing. It's God. It's not me. It's God. Um, I don't remember exactly at what point I found it, but I remember reading Exodus 33. And if any of you remember, that was talking about Moses and how he would go out every day into the camp and he'd spend time with God. And not necessarily physically with God, but in the presence of God. And that message of, I don't want to be where you're not. Him telling God, I don't want to be where you're not. I don't want to, if you're not going to go before me, if you're not going to go with me. And again, God providing things and sending things before them on their journey. So even if he's not physically there, you don't see him. He's made provisions. So that brings me to the next thing. Um, that protection in the presence of God is provisions. So even in the midst of all of this happening in my life, it wasn't like this mad dash to find all these things because guess what? God had already provided them. He provided such an awesome family here and abiding faith that people were already praying even if they didn't know what they were praying for. Um, my girls, my husband, um, already having a village that reached out and embraced them and took them to make sure that they really didn't skip a beat. They knew what was going on because we kind of dealt with some of this stuff before, but even in my children learning and understanding that they had somebody to step in that was already there. So it wasn't a relationship that had to be made in these trying times, it was already there. It already existed. Everything that we needed was already provided. I was out of work, like physically away from work for eight weeks. Um, we didn't miss a meal. In all honesty, I didn't miss my girls recitals. I didn't miss even there were things that I normally wouldn't have been able to do being at work that because I was able to be home that I was able to be more present for just being present um, with God. And then perspective. Um, again, how I'm seeing my situation now, how I'm seeing what I went through even then, and how I will go forward in things has completely changed because of 
where I am with God. Um, and I think even for other people who may not have believed, some of the doctors that came into my hospital room, um, actually all of them, um, whatever was in my medical charts, they seemed to be surprised that what they were seeing in front of them did not look like whatever it was that they were reading in the chart. So hopefully, you know, if, if any of them were non-believers, that they believe now because every time they ask me, how are you feeling or, you know, um, are you okay or do you need anything? I could, when I could say, but God, but God. this is nothing but God. Um, that is all that I could say. And there was nothing else that they could say other than amen. All right. So um, I leave you with this, even with preparing and praying to make sure that I shared um, a testimony befitting to what God has done in my life. Um, some people may not understand because even when I would hear other people's testimony, I wouldn't understand sometimes because I hadn't truly been through it. So something that came across me this week, um, a gentleman was likening thirst and dehydration. And you think about it, we love soda, we love tea, we love all these wonderful things that aren't necessarily nourishing to our body and actually do the, the absolute opposite, which is dehydrated, right? What do we end up going right back to to get hydrated again? So if you think about it, and God and his word being your living water, if you stay hydrated, if you stay in his presence, if you stay filled with him, then when the time comes, well, one, you don't have to worry about being dehydrated. But if you run across a period of time where maybe their water, the physical water isn't available or you run into a tough time, you have stores already in place. You have provisions. You'll have peaks. And you will have a different perspective on what is going on and what is happening and the fact that God has prepared you for the tough times. He didn't just put you there. Um, He's going to help you, but he's also provided for you before you even arrive to that. So, again, there is protection in God's presence. Amen. 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 While I read, thus said the Lord of hosts, Consider ye and call for the morning women, that they may come and send for cunning women. They may come. And let them make haste and take up a wailing cross, that our eyes may run down with tears, and our eyelids gush out with water. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded. Because we have forsaken the land because of our dwellings have cast us out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, yes. O ye women. Oh, Let Jesus. your ear receive the word of his mouth. Yes. And teach your daughters wailing yes. and every one her neighbor a lamentation. Yes. For death has come up into our windows and has entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. Speak! Thus says the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as done upon the open field, 
and as the handful after the harvest may, and none shall gather them. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, yeah. judgment, yeah. and righteousness in the earth. Thank For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you. We magnify your name. We honor you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holiday. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm always making a way and providing. God, we thank you. Bless your name today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I lift you up, God. I magnify you, Jesus. I give you glory, God. I give you praise, Jesus. It all belongs to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And it not been for the Lord. Where well, would we be? Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. I don't know your story. Yes. You don't know my story. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I want you. Yes. Yes. For real. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. God, we thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We welcome you in this place. Yes. Have your way, God. Throw yes. your way around, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I promise. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you praise him, he'll show up. Return to your seats. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless you. teacher, altar worker, and altar worker trainer, head of security, which doesn't surprise me, and, and elder. Elder Barber has served as an adjunct to visiting pastors at church events and is a community volunteer to include serving at homeless shelters. She is a graduate of the University of Florida and received her certified public manager certificate from Florida State University. <laughs> While attending the University of Florida, she was a part of the university prayer group known as the Family, currently a Bible favorite. <laughs> During her appointment with the Department of Corrections, Brother Barber was a member of many correctional organizations and served on several task force. Most notable is the Governor's Ex-Offender Task Force under the former Governor Doug Bush. She was very instrumental in coordinating and setting up the nation's first faith and character-based prison. Mm -hmm. She made appearances on CNN, BET, The Early Morning Show, and Nightline, discussing faith and character-based prisons. Prior to her retirement, she again played a significant role in setting up three more faith and character-based institutions. Throughout her ministry and career, Elder Barber has been 
being able to encourage and teach in areas of character development and self-esteem. You often hear her say, people don't care how much you know so they know how much you care. And believe me, she cares.
children no longer to be outside and the young men no longer on the streets. Speak, thus saith the Lord. Even the carcasses of men shall fall as refuse and the open field like cuttings after the harvester and no one shall gather them. And you don't have to turn to this. I'll just read it for you. Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, and will hear their land, heal their land. Title for this message this morning is well in time. It's well in time. Can you tell your neighbor it's well in time? Point number one, getting right to it. When God calls you, answer. But don't just answer, be prepared. When God calls you, answer. But don't just answer. Be prepared. So you ask me, so how can I be prepared when I don't know what he's going to want? Well, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed and can rightly divide the word of truth. So no matter what the calling is, if, it's, if God calls you, he knows that's what you're supposed to be walking in. Walking in. You're supposed to walk worthy by the vocation of which you call. So if God calls you, don't think he's a dummy that he don't know whether you can do it or not. If he calls you, then you can do it. So we have to, we owe it to not just ourselves, but we owe it to God and we owe it to the people of God. We owe it to the world to be prepared for what God has called us to do. So we have to be ready. So you ask, what is a call? A call is a summons from God to follow a particular instruction. It's time for us to be sonships. The world awaits the manifestations of the sons of God. Many times the call is not for us. It's not for us, but the call usually is for someone else, for us to come through for someone else. So where am I going with this? God has said on this day, Bring out the cunning women. Send for the cunning women. He's calling for the cunning women yeah. to come. Yeah. So you ask me, so what is the call? The call is for the cunning women to come. First of all, they must come. They must come. So when, they, when you say, well, okay, so how are we going to be prepared for that? First of all, God says, come and make haste. Now that doesn't mean for us to be looking all messy when we come. Don't come with your bonnet on. Don't come half dressed. Don't come looking like you're going too formal. Don't come with your red bottoms on. Because if you're coming for what the Lord has told us to come from, and that said to bring about a tearing, a gushing of water eyes, because our people are dying. He's going to come from heaven. He's going to heal our land. But there's a thing that we have to do first. We must answer that call. And we got to be prepared. So when he says make haste, that don't mean just running out your house in my dress, right? That don't mean, oh, I'm almost there. Church, church don't, don't start to 945. If I get there at 10, I'll be, I'll be right by right. There's a call that God has called us to. All right. All right. We don't go by the time that we think it's all right for us to show up. Right. We should be here way before time for service. Because God has called for us women to be cunning women. You know what a cunning woman is? It's a skillful woman. Yes. Now, so I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm going to tell you about that a little later. But God has said to make haste. Some of us our outfits are louder than our prayers. Oh my God. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Some of us, we so sharp, we little casket ready. <laughs> but our prayer life is nothing. The Bible says that men ought to always pray. But when you're a welling woman, you go a little deeper. Now, am I saying that welling is not prayer? No, I'm not saying that. Welling is a form of prayer. But welling is when you go a little deeper. It's a deeper expression of your prayer. It's a deeper expression of mournful cry, of bitter cry, that I'm tired of the way things are. I want things to be different. Yeah, right. See, God knows that the world is looking at, yes, you, the church. The world is looking because it says, when are the sons of God going to be revealed? When shall they appear? Because we are looking just like the world. Uh -oh. yeah. Ain't nothing changing. Everybody's saying, all these mass shootings. All these people on drugs. All these people going to jail. Especially those who look like me. But what are we doing, people of God? Sons of God. Sonships. What are we doing? And when I say sons, I mean women too. We are sons of God. What are we doing, ladies? Now, why do you think that the Lord says, come or call for the cunning women? Just think, women, we have a way of touching somebody's heart. We have a way. Now, you know, in during that time, they used to have skillful women that would come at funerals. And they would, what in other words they would do is not just for show, but they would set the atmosphere. So if they wanted to grieve over something or wanted you to have the passion of something, the cunning women would come and they would start wailing, not just making a noise and not making a joyful noise because it wasn't joyful. It was a time of grieving. Things are happening that shouldn't be happening. So they come and they come from the gut. It comes from the uttermost part. The heart is where it comes from. Lord, there has to be a change. God, all these shootings are, but you can make a difference, Lord. You can make it right, God. You can set minds different. That's a wailing. That's a wailing when it comes from the heart. When it comes from the heart. So we got to make sure that we're prepared and we're ready yes. for the call. Yes. And when we're, when we're doing this, we have to also make sure that we give no offense that the ministry be not blamed. Right. What do I mean by that and why did I say that? Because a lot of times we think we can get in church, we can pray. Some of us can pray the cause of a video. <laughs> But they like they were too soon. Oh. I ain't judging. I just say some of us can do it. Now if the shoe fit, wear it, but don't wear it for long. Change. Right. Hey, because if you go further in the scripture, it says, because if you think you're wise, you know, don't don't cuss, don't glorify in that. Don't glorify in that wisdom you think you got. You think you can pray and got all that. Don't glorify in that. Amen. If you think you're strong and mighty. Don't glorify in your strength. If you think you're rich, don't glorify in your riches. But God said, but what you need to glorify in, what you need to give honor and praise is your relationship with God. That's what he said, your relationship with him. So if you have a prayer life, don't use it for show, but use it to make a difference in this world, in this land. Use it to make the difference in this land. That's what you glory in. Your relationship with God. Amen. Point number two. Know what you are called to do. Know what you are called to do. In this particular case, as I stated, they were called to bring forth tears. Now you may ask me, well, what does tears have to do with it? I'm glad you asked. We'll put the tab on that. We'll come back to it. <coughs> Tears, well maybe I won't put a tab on Tears are a, a weapon that we use. Tears are a weapon that we use. It's not a time that we're going to look so cute. How many of y'all ever said, oh, I had that ugly cry? <laughs> that ugly cry. It's not all coming out your nose. 
Yeah, the one, the one you pray for, the one you with, like they all want it on them. You know? <laughs> but that's the time God moving and moving for yeah, them. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you gotta get crying, it ain't for yourself. Yeah. All my stuff for you. Yeah. My stuff there for you, God, to pray through for you. My snot is there for God to heal you. My snot is there that God can make a difference in this world, that your children may grow up, that your young ones can play outside and not worry about being kidnapped, not worry about being gunned down, not worry about being raped or molested. That's, that's what my snot and my tears are for. Y'all don't believe me, okay? I'm gonna tell you, see, I like to qualify things with the word of God. Well, if you look, and you don't have to turn there because y'all be too slow, and my mom was about to sit down. <laughs> Isaiah 38. Let me kind of prep, set the background for you. So Isaiah, I mean not Isaiah, Hezekiah was told, he said, set your house in order. Because you're going to die. You're going to live. You're going to die. And if somebody was to come up there and tell y'all y'all going to die, what y'all be like? <laughs> no, God. No, God. And then you're just you going to run to somebody else. I'm about to roll on out of here. You're going to <laughs> you tell somebody else, pray for me. They stand up and die. You're going to want somebody welding for you, right? You're going to want to weld. But Hezekiah, he started praying for himself. The Bible says that he went sore. What's that? Bitterly. He wept from deep within, a deep expression. He wailed. Yes, yes. And he said, Lord, I've done this. He started telling God everything he had done right now. He was calling that some of us had to have something to get right. So we got to make sure we're in that right position at the right time, doing the right thing when we're supposed to be doing it. Amen. And if we don't repent, Ask God to make it right, and you can do it. Don't, don't dwell in, well, I have sin. I'm a sinner. I'm unworthy. Don't get caught up in saying I'm worthy. All right, now. God knows that. Amen. Don't get caught up in saying I'm sorry. God knows you are sorry. All right. But what you need to get caught up in, what we say, you need to get in your relationship with God. So get it right. Yeah. Get a relationship with God. Yeah. Get it right. Yeah. Get a relationship with God. Yeah. Not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesdays, not just on, at prayer time. But see, how do you get it right now? See, I told you the women were cunning. I keep going back and forth because I want you to understand this. So how did they become cunning? How did they become still? They went to choir rehearsal. Some of y'all don't want to go to choir rehearsal in the choir. Oops. Some of y'all don't y'all want to know how to pray, but you're gonna go to five o'clock, six o'clock prayer. I saw something the other day. This woman said, the man said, don't forget about five o'clock prayer. She said he could save God at eight. He is the same God at eight, but you need a, a five o'clock prayer. Yeah. You need a six o'clock prayer. Yeah. You need some sacrifices being made. Amen. At that time, you need you, what you need ain't that eight o'clock. God want to see if you right at five. God want to see the sacrifices you make. Yes. Don't just think because I'm there at eight o'clock that I, you know your blessing was your blessing was at five. Your blessing was six. Now I say five because. At Family Worship and Praise Center, we do five o'clock prayer. I think y'all do six here, right? Yeah. I wish we did six. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, we need, we need a five o'clock prayer. We need a five o'clock prayer. But that's how you become skillful. You learn how to sing. You go to rehearsals. And some of us still don't learn, but at least we get a, a hum. We get, a, we, get, we get where we can hold it. You know, we get better than where we were. And the prayer, we may not need the prayer, but at least we, we understand the atmosphere. Yes, yes. And we're in the atmosphere. Yes. Because one thing you got to realize, there's even in a rehearsal, deliverance takes yes. place. Yes. 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 Even in a five o'clock prayer or a six o'clock prayer, healing takes place. Yes. Yes. See, one thing you got to realize that when, whenever, whatever you need at that time, is what takes place. I heard some powerful testimonies this morning. Amen. Powerful. Amen. Let me tell you. When Hezekiah, going back to Hezekiah, when he said, Lord, I've done these things. Let me read this to you. In verse 4, it says, Then came the word of the Lord 
to Isaiah saying, go and say to Hezekiah, thus said the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. What did I say? Tears are a weapon. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. I will add to thy days 15 years. Because he heard the prayers and the tears. He heard the prayers. He heard the wailing. He heard the cries. He heard the heart. Because of thy tears, because of thy wailing, I have heard an add to thy days. To the young get me to thy days. I've added 15 years. Jesus Christ and mercy. See, the Lord will do as he says. Now, if that wasn't enough for you, let me go one more before I take it back. Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and they cry. The men that sigh and cry. Place a mark upon those men's foreheads. For they cry for all of the abomination, abomination that begun in the midst. Everybody else will be killed. Men, women, children, them little boys and girls that you love. If they don't have the mark on that forehead because of their prayers and tears, then they will die. Y'all better do some wailing up in heaven. Oh, right Y'all better wail. So I want to show you how tears are a weapon. So you may look ugly when you cry. Right. You don't look the best. God ain't looking for you to look like you, you still in flesh. You still in flesh if you're trying to look pretty. Everybody can't be like me. <laughs> Everybody can't cry and still be pretty. <laughs> y'all know me, y'all know I'm just kidding. Because I am a cry baby and I love the people of God and I do cry out for God's people. Because I feel like if I'm in a position to when I can do God's people right, God won't let me outdo him. Amen. Amen. If God see me crying out for his, his people need you, what you think God gonna do for me? What you think God gonna do for your husband if you're crying out for somebody else? All right. All right. In that time, because all you had done, look how God blessed you. Yes. When a man should have been dead sleeping in this grave, yes. God came through because all you had done for people. Don't keep it to yourself. In this particular scripture in Jeremiah, he said, Women, teach your daughters to wail. Right. Teach your daughters to wail. In other words, where have y'all heard that before? Mm -hmm. Train up a child in the way they should go. Yeah, right. And when they're old, they what? They won't depart from them. But they know what to do, right? right. Now, it doesn't mean your child gonna be perfect. It don't mean they ain't gonna get in trouble. Yeah. It don't mean that you ain't taught them to go to church because they may not go. But what it does mean is that when you have put it in them, when they need to recall it, they'll recall it. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Let me share something with you. You know, when the year 2023 came, we said, 23 is for me. Time to sound all good and rhyming. 23 is for me. I was one of them that said, 23 is for me. 
In January of 2023, I was diagnosed with COVID. Never had COVID. Had every, I had every vaccination. You should think I'd be going in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and I got COVID. And I was like, now how I got COVID? And, and you know, I'm one of these high risk because I had high, I have high, well, I ain't who said that. It, it don't have me. Hypertension is working over me, okay? Diabetes, and so they call us high risk because of those things. And so I kept saying, I don't need COVID because of this. I don't need COVID. And so I called my son. I have my son and the daughter. My daughter's in Orlando. She had the will from Orlando. But my, do my son is in Tallahassee. And my son said, Mama, you're going to be all right. You're fine. And I said, OK. And so, sure enough, I got over COVID. Me with the hypertension and the diabetes, and of course, my nice weight size. <laughs> All of those things were high risk. I don't know why my weight is high risk. I think I'm fine. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> okay, so I done got, I done got over, I done got over COVID and everything in January. So then I go in January because I believe in going to the doctors and getting my annual physicals and my annual, <coughs> annual mammograms. And for the men that don't know, a mammogram is when they look at our girls and make sure our girls are okay. You know, the upper part, this is what we call our girls, <laughs> our breast. So I went January 17th, it's still January of 2023, it's for me. I went and uh, they said, okay, and I'm like, okay. And then I get a call said, you need to come back. Well, I've had this happen before years ago, but they said, you need to come back. Um, look like we saw something. And so I said, okay. So I went and I was telling some of my prayer warriors and some of my friends, two of them are here today. And they said, oh, nothing wrong with you. You okay? All right. Told the pastor and everything. Everybody, you're fine. I said, okay, I'm fine. Then I go back. This time it's in February for my follow up and I go back and they said, yeah, look like we're gonna have to do a biopsy because we still see that. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, go back to my prayer waters and they, everybody still saying, you okay, you okay? Yeah. February 14th, that love day. Yeah. That beautiful love day. Uh -huh. Oh God, they told February 14th because you gonna show me how much you love me. <laughs> I had the biopsy. A few days later, they said, unfortunately, when it started out like that, can you say, hello, how are you doing today, Miss Barbara? <laughs> but they started out, Miss Barbara, unfortunately, I said, Jesus. Jesus. I had already started my way of Jesus. I didn't want for nobody but me this time. Jesus. For all I've done, for all the people I cried out, was Jesus. So they said, unfortunately, we see cancer. So I went to my prayer warriors again. But my son, uh -huh. I mean, I'm his mama. Uh -huh. He's a minister, but I'm an elder. Uh -huh. I'm over my son. He's my little boy. My little boy. Yeah. Well, I'm even high and young in the church. <laughs> but that tell you about that little boy. That little boy will come and he, my son is over. He in his twenties. For the everybody who looking, he might be looking. This whole thing. He would pull. He pulled me to that altar a couple times, and that boy started to wail. See, now he said, "Bring out the well and women." But it also says, "Teach your neighbors how to live. Teach your neighbors how to how to how to cry out. Teach your neighbors how to wail. That means everybody. Teach them how to wail. Teach them how to cry before the Lord." That boy had me at that altar, and he was crying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, my mom shall live and not die. She had the child of work for the Lord. She got you in the church. That boy was crying out for his mom. Because I trained him up in the way that he should go. I did what the Bible said. I taught my children how to pray. I taught my children how to cry out. He went with me to every doctor's appointment. We got to, then I, and I got a witness here because she was there too. We got to that first doctor's appointment. Because they had told me, what, they called and they said, uh, you need to go to the breast cancer clinic. That thing got real to me. And they said, we got real, real to me. And so 
I was talking to my brother. And uh, when I clicked back over, because they called while we were talking, I just started crying. And he said, because I had a sister that died of cancer. Mm. And I clicked back over and I told my brother, I said, give me one second, let me cry. And he said, you're all right. And I said, I know. I said, my story is not my sister's story, not our sister's story. Yes. And he said, I said, but I, but I just need to cry because it was real. Mm. You know, when you get cancer. Now, I don't know why I didn't think that I could get cancer. I don't know why I thought that. But I didn't think that I could get cancer. And so then the first lady called me. First lady of uh, uh, Federal Worship Crisis, Lady Michelle said, I'm just calling to check on you. I said, give me, I'm still, I said, I'm still trying to process this thing. Give me, give me a moment. And so then I let my big brother know. And I told him, he came, he would ask me, well, how do you know? And I said, I'm fine, because at this point I was fine. But it took a look. I said, I'm fine, I'm fine. So we went to the doctors. It was my son, me, and who we call Auntie Penny came. And we sit sitting there, and the doctor came out. The doctor says, how you doing, Miss Barbara? I'm thinking, she might have chipped <laughs> How you think I'm doing? How you think? How you Because my son, one thing my son had told me was, mama don't sit at the house, around the house being depressed. Thank God. Get out of the house. If you get up. He said, get out. He was just telling me things. I said, yes, son. I want to say yes, dad. So he, was, he was telling me, you know, you're not going to be Carcinoma IS. She said, which is stage zero. Stage zero? So he said, cancer? Right. She said, you have precancerous cells. Mm. Now God turned you can't tell me that. Hey, cool. Cool. Oh, yeah. 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 She said, all the things you could do, but she said, you, you don't need to do all of them, but we're going to let you decide what you need to do. And I said, well, I just remove that, what's in there, the sales, you know, just do the least invasive surgery as possible. And they said, yeah, because, you know, we got it. We're, we're going to do it. So that happened. I had surgery March 13th. Sometime in March, I can't tell you today. We went back and they said, you're cancer free. <laughs> Yeah. It ain't just the 
white people killing the brown and black people? We got black on black crimes. Aren't y'all tired of that? Act like it will. Act like it and don't be thinking about yourself all the time. The Bible says cry out. Cry out. He said there'll be caucuses in the street. They don't even have time to move. It's like some dog that's in the street. You ain't got time to clean it up because it's so much. It's happening so often. It's time to wail, church. It's time to wail. If you'll be one that's willing to wail, especially when it's not about you, stand up and come on. Let's praise God for some wailing folks. If you're willing to wail, come on to this altar. If you don't have it, you say, well, I don't know if I got what it takes. I don't know if I have what it takes. Yes, yes. I may not have the strength. I don't know how to do it. Um, and you want somebody to pray with you, Jesus. come to the altar. Yes. Yes. Come to the altar. Yes. Y'all, it's well in time. Yes. It's well in time. Yes. We want to go just beyond God, our Father. Look on that Jesus. Yes. But we want to go to God. Yes. Touch this nation. Yes. God, give us your peace. Yeah. <laughs> 
testimony to come after this. You don't never have to tell me, God. Show it, God, show yourself from the storm. Show yourself mighty. God, it's your glory. We don't take none for ourselves, but we glorify and honor you. It's not my words. You just use this dumb butt. You just use this dumb behind. You just use this dumb vessel to bring forth your word and to speak miracles, to speak signs of wonder, to speak healing, to speak deliverance. God, those been looking for jobs, God. Let them get jobs, God. Not just any job, but jobs worthy, God, to provide for their families, to provide for their homes. God, let us be above only and not believe. Call us to be lenders and not borrowers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And as you take your seat, go with the well in your heart. Go with the well and in your lips. Go with the well and from your mouth. Go with the well and go with the well and let us all yell, Jesus! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And amen. Knowing that God has made a difference. And there has been great people in the room. That God has made a change because of the wailing. Because of the crying out of the people of God. And those that are online right now. I know that you heard those prayers. This, this anointing goes everywhere. The spirit of God goes everywhere. So as you are online and you heard these prayers and you felt this anointing, continue to wail, continue to be cunning, continue to be consistent in your tears as you cry out for those that you love, that you care for, that God is able and he's much more able to work things out for you than you even know. So give it to him today. Just lift those hands up before the Lord one more time. Yes, and just want you to say thank you, Lord. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Because of the prayers of the people of God. And we thank you all over your life. It's already done. Whatever you have before the Lord, I don't care what the enemy has told you about that child that's on drugs. That, that baby that ran away. Yes. I don't care what the enemy said. Yes, yes. That made you feel like suicidal is the only way that you can get through. Yes. But I'm telling you, breakthrough is here. Jesus. The anointing and the power of God is here. Yes. To break every stronghold of the enemy. He cannot hold you captive anymore. Yes. But you're set free by the blood of Jesus. And we thank God for all of those that are online today and all of those that are in the sanctuary and everything that God has already done. Like Reverend Barbara said, there will be testimonies of what God has done from this day. It's going to be testimonies of his goodness. So expect it. Look for it. Write it down. Know that God has dispatched his angels as you were wailing. Yes. He dispatched some angels, y'all, for you all, for your family, yes. for your loved one that you brought before the Lord. He has dispatched angels to make the difference for you. And those on streaming, angels have already been dispatched to move in your behalf. And we thank you. We thank you so much, Reverend Barbara, for the word of God. Give her a hand. For the word of God, we need you. Today. And we thank all of those that are online today. We thank you for being with us. If you would like to give, know that you can give online, abidingfacecc.org, and you can give a gift there. If you have been blessed today by the message or just by just being under the anointing and the breakthrough, go ahead and give that offering to the Lord. We thank you for being here today. We thank you for being part of our services. 
And we pray that you have a wonderful and awesome day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.